10 seconds remaining. <sighs> Virtus Pro's turn to ban. <sighs> Radiant Team ban. Virtus Pro's turn to ban. <laughs> Radiant Team Pick. Virtus Pro's turn Faceless to pick. Faceless Void. Disruptor. Radiant Team Pick. Hello, everybody. That's right. The Summit 5. The Summit is back, and we are in the European Qualifier. It's phase number two, and we're heading into round number two. It's Virtus Pro versus Ad Finem. We just witnessed Virtus Pro best alliance in a full best of three, three game series, but. Pretty much for all three games, Virtus Pro looked damn solid. They brought a aggressive pace, and they just really laid it on Alliance and just shoved him down that lower bracket. Now they're going to go against a real tough challenge here in the Greek squad at Finem. I'm Cuddle Guy for Beyond the Summit. I'm going to be joined again remotely by my good buddy, Mr. Alan Riaboras Anderson. Welcome back, Ryu. And, uh, well... What do you make of this matchup, Virtus Pro versus Ad Finem? You said you felt pretty good about Virtus Pro going against Alliance, but now what do you think against them and Ad Finem? Ad Finem just lost a close game series against uh, I think Team Spirit for the Nanyang, uh, so their morale is probably a little bit down. Virtus Pro is a little bit up, so mm -hmm. I, from a morale standpoint. Uh, Probably Virtus Pro has a little bit, but both teams have been playing a lot today. So, I mean, it could be anybody who's just like, okay, well, you're, you're Dota players, you're grinding games all the time, you're playing tons of qualifiers a day, and it's just basically who's going to show up and play. Because I think it's another series where it's both there. It's like, you know, 55, maybe 45 once again for Virtus mm -hmm. Pro, uh, just because of their hot streak. But uh, Team AF, they can anytime but it's uh, like what i was about to talk to you about was looks exactly like our game one draft almost yeah right alliance i mean verse pro have no pro. shame in pulling out what they just did and yeah i mean f and m i'm sure they were hanging around probably watching the series waiting to see who they were going to be facing up against and I don't know, maybe they feel like they can do what Alliance did, but a bit better. But uh, Virtus Pro or, already warmed up with this kind of a lineup. Uh, I, I would imagine that they could be uh, more favored. Ten I remember seconds. No Fear and his Disruptor play was actually ridiculous in that game number one. He set up some wonderful Static Storms and it ended up being very unfortunate <clears throat> Excuse me for uh, S4 and his puck that game, getting caught out in the upper part of the river and and all that but you know we'll see if the same thing happens for this go around and what happened and plan to do to change things up uh, if we did see a potential weakness in that Virtus pro draft from game number one uh, what do you think it could have been and maybe something that uh, the greek squad could do to maybe uh, you know have a better time Ten seconds remaining. just constantly when they uh if they five man like five Virtus pro did you have remaining. to make sure that either you five man rotate and you get more kills than they do or you're taking objectives elsewhere on the map and because phoenix wasn't even touched game it's going to be picked up from Virtus pro yep. uh we saw this exact same thing earlier too where you know alliance they got wisp plus doom and this time it's just wisp flying for team af here and Virtus pro's team fight is just absurd so you're gonna have a hard time fighting into that and what you have to do is make sure you take objectives elsewhere on the map or just find pickoffs constantly around the map so uh, a good hero and in this situation is actually playing potentially ursa uh for af right now uh, maybe they don't want to pick up their, their carry right now maybe they go for their offlaner right now but mm -hmm. need something for that egg needs thing to help out even clinks could be a good deny pick for vp right like vp yeah. might just go back for clinks right now and it's well, how do we stop that? And it's kind of like the same thing <laughs> for Alliance earlier. It's yep. 
that would mean we're probably going to be seeing the clinks right here and now because it's <laughs> like game number one again Virtus pro they it's so funny i mean it's straight up deja vu because Virtus pro lost the coin flip again they lost it against alliance alliance uh opted for first pick so again you know, same thing now, Virtus Pro opted for Dyer. They get the same draft. They're drafting the same way. This is where they would pick the clinks. I mean, Virtus Pro have no shame in doing these runbacks. They were even going to do it in Dream League uh, when they had their matchup against Navi, but Navi did buckle and change their draft slightly. Um, and then that would leave G with the last pick. But now that we've already seen the puck, okay, well, there's the clinks. So, you know, by this trend, what was it? I think it was a Viper. From G in game one, was that what it was? No, that was game two. I think it was Razor. It was, it Razor, was Razor game one. Though, so, what AD or AF can do right now is they can do, do the act strategy that I called for, but oh, it's so difficult. Like, you can try and run aggressive, but you don't have like the Juggernaut, which was a really good ban. Uh, like, Wisp, Jug, plus Lion could take it to the Clinks, but you need to find some kind of initiator hero left in the pool. Uh, that could be really good for your offlane. Also, need to think about your carry here. What could be really good? Sven is is decent, but I just feel like he's going to get kited constantly, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of ways to control him in team fights until he gets his BKB. So it'd be scary, but potentially what AF want to try to do. Uh, it's a really bad anti mage game. I don't think mage could get online <laughs> fast enough, but you know, I know Madara loves that hero, so. If they get a spin, I'm gonna giggle, like without question. Like it's just, it just feels like at the number. Like, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take Alliance's Alliance draft, draft and we're just gonna show them how they were supposed to do it. <laughs> and that verse, bro, you don't, uh, you did not have the better draft. We just think that we can play Alliance's draft better. And if that was the case, then, then we would see a spin pop up here. But it is gonna be a bit different. Bulldog did not play a Tide Hunter that game. Did he play a Doom that game? Now I can't he played remember. Doom. He, played he played Doom, Doom offlane, got yeah. the greedy Midas. Uh, Tide was played by Loda in that third game. So yeah, we didn't get to see a bug Tide, sadly. But uh, it's another good initiate here that they desperately needed. So we have almost as good fight now. Problem is they need to make sure they burst down the heroes. And Blinks is very naturally tanky when he has the ultimates. You have the Sun Ray now to back you up, mm -hmm. heal. Uh, faces void. Obviously, we all know about his time walk away, healing him back up the pool. And so you have to make sure when you lock down a target, he's dead for Team AF. Because if they're able to, you know, one hero survives, it's turned around and they could have a huge trouble in these teams. Uh, mid, so we have a mid hero left for VP and then AF, they need carry. So, what do you think? Well, a lot of decent options out there uh, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the puck. Uh, Adfinem already got rid of the Queen of Pain, which was something we had suggested, if I'm not mistaken, from that first game in their matchup against the Lions. So they could get maybe a DK. I know DK melee-wise not good to participate outside the Chrono, but maybe in Dragon form and plus some extra push, which always goes together with the Verse Pro lineup. Maybe they roll back and get the Tinker again. Uh, nope, Tinker gonna be banned, so no, no, tinker. no tinker there. Uh, but it's Advent first, and they're gonna go Chaos yes! Knight. Okay. No. It's the same right. thing I wanted Alliance to pick the game. So and they then... were listening to the cast, and they're just gonna go yeah. with Coach Ryu on this one, yeah. Yeah, but... Ah, nice. I, I really like Chaos Knight. <laughs> it's where, it's where in these situations where you actually don't have the best AoE clearance for the Illusions. I mean, sure, you have Disruptor and mm. Phoenix, they're decent, but the cores of Faces Void and Clinks aren't the best for clearing out Illusions. What if they went uh, for, like, an OD here? Is that too ballsy to say? Mm, OD typically I, go to dealing with the Illusions? And... Yeah, OD can shut down Puck a little bit, uh, but it, it's just Heroes just got nerfed to shit. Yeah, nobody plays. I, I feel like it'd be a good pick, but teams are like, eh, that hero's dead, though, so we might not go for it. If it was Wings, Wings would just pick whatever the hell they want. <laughs> Who cares what's in the meta or not? This is what they feel, Alcare. I would say. Yeah, but yeah, they'll have to get something else. Alchemist? Yeah, that that could be something. That could be something. They definitely need a way to deal with the illusions, though. That's, you know, maybe a, a Mjolnir candidate or, you know, any sort of AoE plus Mjolnir being able to muscle Desolator. past the puck. <laughs> mm -hmm. You actually have Desolator plus Five still work for Clinks. That's true. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alchemist. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Nice. Nicely done. 
And, and uh, it, all right. I, I, I like this this draft matchup uh, better than what, from what we saw the last series. And I, I don't know. Now, do you think history will repeat itself? Will Virtus Pro be able to kind of continue that trend with the Alchemist? Does it change their timing a bit? Or do you think they're still going to be able to do like what we saw? Once the level sixes came together, they used one ultimate at one lane and got a couple of ganks there. Then they had another ultimate ready and got more work done on the other side of the map. And they just kept building up that momentum. Can that happen again? Or will Adfinem with this lineup be able to kind of hold their own? I see Faceless Void getting a lot more out of the off plane than the Tidehunter, just because Clink can zone them out way more efficiently. And then the supports of VP are probably going to go for them. And then Wisp is kind of like that X factor that kind of needs to help out. Like he needs to help zone out the Void in the bottom lane, but he also needs to help out against the Alchemist. So it is. It is very scary. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it again. If VP can survive the first 10, 15 minutes of this game and FNM don't have a really good lead, then I, I honestly favor their lineup going into the later stages of the game. Like, if this goes past 50, like 40, 40 minutes, it's not 80% over, but it's like heavily, heavily favored for VP. So, you know, there's timing windows for AF that they're going to have to hit. So, what, we'll see if they do hit that mark. Frantic pings will be flying out here at the start, and no surprise, we'll continue to see a lot of early ward play here. And again, for what feels like the, you know, fourth game straight, we'll see this early doodad ward coming out from the Darier side. Uh, I'm sure FM probably were watching a bit, but uh, they're going to reserve the sentries in the meantime. But they could be heading up that way and could deal with that early ops ward. But for these wards, they kind of already kind of gave the intel uh, FNM saw what the, the landing situation was going to be, and we'll see what kind of adjustments they make. Uh, Aloha Dance is scouting out the top bounty rune, is going to do it in Skeleton Walk, and he takes it. That is two bounty runes going for Virtus Pro Ryu, and including G, who got that early Greeble's Greed. What is this? Level 1 Glimpse back. No Fear is really trying to see if he can get some early pelting damage on Thug, I guess. Pull him away from the block, maybe. Yep, and... They're doing musical lanes now, where they're rotating the clink to the bottom lane, so this is really good. Uh, AF would have started with a huge advantage. They managed to put the clinks, or put the Chaos Knight against the clinks. Just needs to get his levels, needs to get past level 6, and he can't get shut down early on. Uh, so, AF had a really nice approach, but you know, yeah. even smarter now for VP. Yeah, with the wards, they tried to make an adjustment by shoving the Tidehunter to the bottom lane to make the most of it here, but obviously with the response coming out from Virtus Pro, it looks like another audible is in order. A TP comes out from the Chaos Knight, and they're hoping to make a level 1 gank out of it, like a la Fluff and stuff style here. Here we go. No Fear in a bit of trouble, but here comes a long ball tether. It's a 3 on 2. No Fear slowed up. Eats the Fairy Fire. Needs a bit more. They need it. They got it. It's going to be Spartan who picks up the first blood as, well, add Finem. We'll strike first. And starting off with TPs early on, just because they're like 50 gold, it's just so beneficial now. It's and you just put it on one of your supports, and it, it you know you set up these early first bloods like this, and even the rotations. So this is a really smart pl gameplay coming in from both teams. But now AF first blood on the board, going to your wisp. That's going to help him a lot, so he can get you know either a faster urn or boots or whatever he wants, and. Have to look in the middle lane here. This does free up G to have a, a nice time here in the mid lane. He's got his poor man shield already. He's got his quelling blade, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have that constant harassment of like a, a wisp rotating to the mid lane. So it should be a really good time for the Alk here in the mid lane. Two minute rune is going to be coming up, and ooh, the bounty rune is actually at the top, where maybe next time we'll be there to get it. That's unfortunate, you know, with your Alks, you typically like to see if you can get those bounty runes into your uh, possession so you can get the extra bit out of their Greeble's Greed, but doesn't really deter G a whole lot, and he gets right back into the grind of farm, and uh, Thug is just continuing to kind of deal with the pesky acid spray here, as G is going to be leveling it up. He's just going to have to chew through the regen as much as possible and deal with it. It's not easy, though. 15-1 and one CS already for G. Puck falls behind now 9-1. and one. It's just one of those situations where that first bounty rune 
means a lot to a puck, where he has to get that early salve out, and he wasn't able to. So, and then that kind of hurts him, where he has to play super aggressive early on against the the alchemist to try and put pressure on him before he. Gets... It was a, a good advantage coming out early for that rune type coming out from. And uh, both will kind of manipulate the jungle a bit here. Yoku is going to forfeit his off lane and just, you know, take his best bet and move into the jungle here. Doesn't even have the Talon on hand yet, but is just going to make do with what form he can get here. In the meantime, we'll get some uh, love by the magical friendly beam coming out from FNG. Uh, but this will put pull two supports away, or not two supports, but two off the map uh, in the meantime here. And uh, well, mid lane thug is playing a dangerous game. He's very low on life, but knows he doesn't have to worry about any sort of concoctions done. Uh, but pings are out, and FNG is thinking about maybe a go here for the puck if uh, permitted here in the near future. And with the lanes keep on rotating constantly, it's got, it's going to benefit the clinks more. So because he hasn't died yet, he's getting up his levels now. They haven't. They kept rotating. They just kind of backed off and saying like, "Oh, hey, we're gonna oh top rune." Oh, One minute rune. Oh, it's a bounty. It's for G. He gets it, and uh, well, Advidem want to make him pay for it. Here comes three, trying to get close enough. For Courier <laughs> flying right through the air. FNG is gonna give him a little bit of that love, and G stops for a moment. Trades off from the Courier here, and maybe next time. Good oh. interception. Suddenly, a wild lion appears out of nowhere, <laughs> and is there to greet G. And they're gonna get the kill. They will get the response kill though. And now a glimpse back as they try to go for more. It looks Tether like Spartan might not be able to make it away. Tether's up. He's out of there. See you later, nerds. Right off to the side of Skylark for this one. Yeah, that's still a really good rotation coming in from AF. It's like, what? Where did the line? I didn't even see him. I'm going to pay attention to my minimap again. Not even playing Dota. But that was pretty good. Shutting down the Ak as much as they can. And G. Fine here. It's nighttime. They have the high ground ward freshly in from FNG on the Phoenix and he's also sitting behind him now with the sun. Denied. It'd be very difficult to, to kill off G even if they have three heroes. Yep. Uh, it will be a bit of a slowdown here until Thug probably gets that level six in coil uh, good to go. But props oh, they have the maybe next up time. Here. There we go. Top okay. Pull back for Tide. He gets off a two-man anchor smash but you know we saw this pretty much in the last setup. Oh! Oh! oh not enough! Not enough. Fifteen oh, life. Oh, he got the of FNG. death. Ray? What? No. Not no. at all. He didn't get hit vision like we had. Maybe he didn't see him. Not exactly sure. And maybe the difference between having a tide there and a doom there for what we saw in that game number one. We saw oh. that same gank set up last time against the Lions. They had some wonderful early, you know, strafe searing arrow damage. Uh, and then set up with the glimpse, allowed him to get like two, you know, even more shots in. But this time, just not enough to break through the reduced damage of that anchor smash. It's it's just really nice what they've done with the tide, putting him in the safe lane, and then making sure he was able to get some levels. Even though he went top lane, he was still like level two or two and a half, and he was already setting up for a, a good time. Whereas if he had just started off going top, they he would have gotten absolutely crapped on. They would have had nothing. So. Their early game is looking very good. Problem is still, you're not going to be able to shut down this Alchemist free farming. And that's going to be very concerning. He almost has his yeah. armlet. And how are they going to burst down during the team fights? This is going to be the main question. Like, it's, it's a lot to chew through. A lot to chew through. It's, we're going to have to see. You know, it's one of those things at the end of the day, and this is why we saw, you know, through Dream League Land Finals, I don't think we saw one Alchemist game, but nearly every single game the Alchemist was banned. Sometimes teams just don't want to put themselves in a position where they have to play an Alchemist kind of a game, and it's one of those heroes that you just can't leave untapped. They just get so much farm so fast, they, they'll become a serious problem, and with all those nice new fancy buffs to stuff like the Armlet, he is just a serious fighter, and... And something that uh, I hope Advenem are not going to be underestimating here in game number one. But nonetheless, G continues that grind to farm. He just got this armlet, and I'm going to look over. Now he's like, armlet, 300 gold. Next time I look at him, he's going to have another item and another, like, 2,000 gold on hand. It, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, but how uh, does he make sure that he's always at top? Okay, they just ordered this same place, and then it got two wards rewarded. Oh. Coil on the Yoki. 
Hey, it should be fine. No, nope, FMG goes down hey, in nope. the meantime, and oh, he's not going to be able to get the time leap off and avoid the coil duration. Meanwhile, top lane will catch the back end of this action. Aloha Dance gets off a few pelting shots for the Tide Hunter, but nothing will be there. And, he relocated uh, uh, home for Wits to over here mid lane, and are they going to actually go on no fair here? It looks like it. Long tether all the way across. Ooh, a drive by a spirit ball action coming out from Spartan. That was cute. Nice little killing spree for him. Cute plays. And uh, the Greeks are going to walk away with a nice 5-1 to one early advantage. They don't stop there. They're looking to go for the bird now. FNG going to get sucked in. Hit with a nice connection. And another kill for Spartan on the wisp. But they were managed to take down the tide. Chase them down and mm -hmm. the searing arrows. So... At the other side of things, Barlark paying, uh, paying with his life, but yeah, this is just full out aggression. This is from AF to, and it's a lot of success too, right? You're trying to make sure you have these timings right before their ultis are online. Uh, and big changer in that game earlier was the disruptor ulti coming online so fast. This time, yep. Void will have his level six, but still no fear, only level five right now, and they're pressuring on all fronts right now. So this is really good from AF. You're right. I mean, that was the difference. That gank top lane where they couldn't kill the Tide, well, against Alliance, they got that kill. Disruptor got that level 6, and this all worked out very differently. Well, now it's like somebody changed something in the past, and the Tide Paradox is completely wonky <laughs> with Virtus Pro, and this is the future that could have happened for Alliance if things were a bit different. Given that, yeah, of course, the draft is different, and, you know, f &M probably are taking it with a different approach. It's just funny to see Virtus Pro now on the back foot with a very similar lineup where they were so far ahead before. And, ooh, we're going to have Tactical. a breakout. Madara making his move for G, but we are having a bit of a lag spite, and it looks like they're just going to kind of get back going here. Four seconds to a big stun, but look at this. Now Yoku jumps in, gets off a nice little chrono. It's going to shut down the tide before any ravage is even going to be had here. No fear. Instantly bursted apart by Thug, who's on a killing spree. Phoenix to the high ground. FNG very low, but away from danger. Now they're going to look for a response. Madara, the CK run and hustle and top. Are both back? Look at this turnaround play from Tide. He is back from the grave, and he's got a ravage good to go. And that is going to help secure the fight there for Adfinem. Though, uh, G will survive and so will Aloha Dance. Looks like we are going to have a, a pause at the back end of the skirmish. But when the dust does settle, you know, it's, it's, it, oh, it would have been, it's hard to say with G disconnecting if he was actually supposed to be here for any sort of response from Virtus Pro. But nonetheless, I have made stun. the most of that. He doesn't have a stun. His ulti was oh, down. Yeah. It would have been useless. He would have actually died if he was there with the Ravage. So, because he had his ulti on PD. But. All things considered, that was a really good chrono. Like, you managed to kill off Skylark there. He wasn't pop ravaged, forced to buy back, which is hurting his item progression. If they really needed to have the wrist relocate in time, I, I, he didn't get it in time for Spartan, so. That is going to be something to look forward to. And How just watch well out. Watch how fast yeah. Madara gets healed up now. This is like a walking fountain. Oh, they and know he turns the too. corner and he's back and he's alive. And suddenly Aloha Dance is like, what the hell? No detection though, so. It'll be good. Come on, guys. This is not 4K MMR. We carry detection in our games against the Viz Heroes. Alright, Just... well. Very surprising, I was going to say, to see Edvinem, like, really on the up and up now. Not expecting a clutch decision like that. The buyback to get tied back into the fight with the Ravage really helped him out in the back end of that. And and now we're going to see them just try to really reap the benefits. They have much more of a of a lineup to kind of be happy to rumble it out with Virtus Pro at this point in the game. And Virtus Pro are actually the team now, unlike what we saw from the last series where they want to play around with the clock a bit. I mean, they have this Alchemist lineup, so they can afford to kind of continue to grind out the farm and just hand over some of these tier 1 towers. Yeah, you, you kind of have to wait out for your Void Ultimate. Uh, it, it, you don't have the perfect glimpse onto the Tidehunter and to, you know, Kinetic Storm. Kinetic Field, Static Storm. It could be a disaster of a fight. And uh, you're just going to have to keep singling out the Tidehunter in these team fights, which doing a really good job or you could kind of single out puck too just because he's squishy he doesn't have his blink yet he went for this veil build and then he doesn't have his jewels too on top of that so uh it, so thug is in a position to play very offensive right now but his defensive capabilities are are lackluster 
Aloha Dance going on the move though, feeling like maybe he can pull in some uh, early scavenging kills. Uh, not gonna find too many targets. Holds that value Blightstone here, and we'll see if he goes straight for the Deso or not. You know, pretty close. Is maybe next time is gonna be building up what looks like a, another stack for his team, potentially maybe the Tide to get a finish on a Mech or Blink. But he has spotted out Aloha Dance right now, who's waiting one more second for the Dark Pack. He's gonna take the Tomato Creep. No, no. Maybe he'll take this creep. Uh oh. Hello, how's it going? A storm's a brewing. It's a static storm. Gonna be dropped out with a uh, nice little play. Ooh, hey, look at this. A response with Madara and company. Good glimpse, though. It's gonna send the CK right back and leave the Wisp hanging here. But Bug shows up, drops off the coil. They drop off the finger, and, uh, well, at Venem, we'll have the last laugh in the end. Nice little turnaround by them. We'll make it a two for one. Yep. And. That's good and bad at the same time. With Clinks going down, that's a really good trade for AF, but at the same time, we, we talk about it enough. It's just giving space to this Alchemist who already has his yep. Radiance done at 12 oh minutes. God. And hero is just the most joke hero I've ever seen. I, like, you know, Naga Radiance is very annoying to play against eventually when it gets to that stage, but at least it like, takes, you know, 20 minutes, 25 oh, yeah. minutes. It, this is just ridiculous how fast he's able to get online, but... Yeah, this is I, Naga a bridge. Just get to the point. And get there faster. That's Alchemist for you. And, you know, whether or not, you know, they they made the adjustments so that the, what is it, illusions don't get the benefit of the Greebles Greed. It, it It's, no, it's some numbers, but they still get gold, you know, yeah, they and still it, it, they like, still do their job. And that's I thought they important. would make it so they couldn't get gold or something. That would be like a Oh, nerf. he'd be dead hero for sure. Or at least definitely that item build would be dead for sure. Oh, bottom lane, Yoku looking to make a move on the Thug with a nice Chrono Sphere. They pop out the stun, and Aloha Dance will get the last hit. Nice little solo pick off there onto the little fairy dragon. We'll secure that one for Virtus Pro. Thought they're going to be following it up with a tier one push. It looks like they eventually will, but you know, more economy. The rich get richer. You is really what it's all about. Yeah. They were able to glimpse them from so far away, so far away, and it's just one of those situations where it's going to be hard for AF to. Really fight without their uh, uh, big ultimates online. They rely so heavily on the Tide Hunter Ravage this game, whereas the side of VP, we saw it earlier. Like if faces void, is Chrono's down, what do they do? They can just use their disruptor, who's the same thing, where you get a good glimpse, static storm, a kinetic field setup, and, and it's just the same thing where they have two things to work. Uh oh, they're looking for Thug here. Aloha Dance is already creeping in, but they will just cross each other's path. But now they'll see him come back into the wave. Ooh, do they have enough firepower in lockdown for him? It's very important for No Fear to get this catch. They have the vision, so that's a glimpse into a static storm. Oh, there oh, it relocate. is. Relocate. Oh. The bailout will not be there. Oh, it's a bit too long. The relocated level one just takes a bit too long. And that means that they're not going to be able to get him out now. Look at this. The egg going to be popped. Here comes a Ravage from Skylark. Beautiful catch on the Virtus Pro. And now the turnaround is Matara going to be di dishing out the Wild Man army. And look to make it go. But G still hands strong. Standing, fighting with the power of the Radiance. It looks like it could be just too much for Advanem to handle. And boom! They will quickly wipe the floor with a couple of more. Can they get maybe next time? No, he'll be able to make it away on the back of a TP. And it looks like Skylark is even going to pop his own smoke to hustle away from any sort of danger Run. here. I think he might be good. <laughs> Don't go down. They're still pinging him. Oh, he, he looks like he's good. And he's out of there. But still, a fight one for Virtus Pro. Really good for VP there. Coming out ahead. And you're just going to keep giving. And we're, like the scariest part about this game is just when Alka is going to start giving the eggs away these heroes so you're gonna have to ramp it up a little bit and I, I guess the best way for them to get more aggressive is gonna be you know tied having his mechanism completed soon help out if they had that mech nearby save the wisp or the, the puck in time so he could have relocated out they have eyes here on G they relocate. Well, bottom lane or relocate. They're looking to bring in the Tide Ford. He has no Ravage, but they think with enough manpower, they should be able to do it. And it looks like they are right. A four on one, really. An Alchemist all alone stands no chance. And Tide and Wisp will get right back into their business, farming up this ancient camp. And now he's going to have the mech complete once this goes down. And it was a good kill for Chaos Knight to get to. Get him closer to his heart. 
So I, I kind of like the item choice this game. There's just so many things that can go through the the mid, mid, mid lane. Oh, Oha. Good to be in trouble here. Uh oh. Oh, they got a sentry too. Coil's gonna be popped. Looking to wind up the shot. Maybe next time gets it done. Killing spree for him. He's had a pretty nice line game so far. Uh, and Aloha dance a bit too overzealous hanging around uh, trying to kind of poke at Thug there. Yeah, that's one of those kills where you just give away so much to Puck. You like normally give him an item plus more money to his next item. So yeah. those those mistakes cannot happen if you if you want to win this game, especially when you're making that solo play. Like it, it's a fine play if you make it with like Void Chrono or Disruptor, but solo play it's And now we'll have to see. This is a couple of nice boosts going the way for Adfinem. We saw his first pro take a huge good team fight, but ever since then, you know, you don't want to be handing over these freebies. I mean, I wouldn't call them freebies. It does, you know, force Adfinem to kind of make either a rotation play or setup, but they're more than happy to get the extra little rubber band factor, uh, or so be it. Dara yeah. going to be going right back into the grind of Farmer U, and he already has a Reaver. He's just going armlet to heart. Yeah, it's... it's this game, the reasons why I said earlier, it's uh, you have the Chronos, it's gonna Chronosphere that's gonna go through the BKB. Raw HP is what you're gonna need to survive through it. Uh, you know the Sunray, still gonna pierce the BKB. Uh, so you have to go for this. I feel maybe that it's not gonna be good. Obviously, when we're talking about the Sunray, but can he live here? They're gonna be all. Oh my God. That is... The death dust. Oh, see you later, man. Spartan they're gonna takes come him back right back to base. Too? Are they gonna counter fight? They're looking for it. Thug, he's got an invis rune. He's creeping in. He's gonna get the veil, the coil. He's looking to go for G. The finger is gonna be there. He goes for the ulti. It's gonna be enough to regen. The egg is gonna be popped, but it's not good enough. Ravage will come out and they'll secure the kill for G. And Madara returns to action with Spartan and the two of them easily take down No Fear. It's gonna be two for nil on this one. Add Finem, man. Wonderful turnaround play by them, and another wonderful save coming out from Spartan on this Wisp. Oh yeah, uh, really well played. And then what what made matters even worse was the fact that Chaos Knight, if he had dust up eight seconds left, they would have got the kill on Clank's too. So they were a little bit fortunate here. Now this is a good play to, you know, go high ground here, force some rotations back. Uh, Alchemist maybe force a buyback out. Force the glyph as well, so you can push the other tier twos. But sticking around right now could be very bad. Like you don't have your ravage. They don't have their chronosphere too, so they realize that their big ultimates are on cooldown too. But, uh, no A either. This looks like a pretty breezy, easy tier three, and uh, not really done yet. But now they're going to see the rotations coming in. They hesitate. Madar looking to pull back. G hustling forward, and there's going to be the glyphs. Uh, did not go for any sort of special timing. There is going to be the jump from Spartan looking to help out a partner in need. Madara! Good, good. No, he's out! No, oh, he's dead. <laughs> Looks like he almost made it out. Spartan was close that time, but they will take Madara down, and Spartan will have to come back later into the fight while G, Yoku, and Aloha Dance hustle forward. They're going to get Skylark down. Wisp returns. FNG oh, thug, goes up now. in arms with him, but look at the turnaround play. Nope, you're dropping down the static storm right on top of Thug, which will take him quickly and cleanly out of the fight. Spartan trying to go for the TP, but not going to be happening. They got the glimpse for him, and Virtus Pro will take this fight back. They hold wonderfully and get a double kill for Aloha Dance. And I think uh, ad for them, it was great to get the tier three, but lingering ar around just a little too long. Yeah, that that could be the game deciding moment too. Like if you look back on it, it, it could just be all over from there. Uh, and yeah, you can see how important this approach is. And they, they just can't get there fast enough. This stun is uh, a little bit questionable. <laughs> Thug so. though. Thug Good. though. Nah. Ooh, oh, well, oh, the timing. No. If he actually jumped to that, I would have said. I would say he might have been able to grab that right there. Though that obviously would have been just way too high risk, high reward for him. <laughs> yeah, that with those buybacks now too, they they absolutely need oh. to get the stun. Okay, maybe next time he's got a bleep dagger. He jumps in. They're gonna get the stun. They're gonna get the pullback. He's in trouble. He just get healed up. FNG is trying. Response Chrono coming out from Yoku. Relocate. Nice, relocate. And they pull him right back out. Maybe next time gets the finger off, but now he's in trouble under Yoku here. G gets back into the action now. Ravage followed from Skylark as he gets stunned on the way in. Can they burst him down in time? They certainly can. Now comes the return of Madara and Spartan, but Madara falls fast. Spartan falls almost just as fast, it looks like, or not. 
Yep. Yes, so. Yeah, double kill, too. Okay. Back end of this one, though. It looks like Thug sidesteps here. G's waiting for him. Can't get the vision, though, to get the stun off. Thug's still hustling away. Then G. And G. Oh. Okay. It looks like Thug's going to make it out from any sort of trouble. And when the dust does settle, Ryu, it's a four for four trade. I would say that's actually good for AF. Uh, uh, all things considered, they might have used a lot of buybacks, but at least they took away the Aegis away from the Alchemist, so they don't have that to play around with anymore. That was some really sloppy play, though, coming in from uh, uh, AF. Like, they relocated the this plus the CK back into <laughs> opening arms, and they both just died, whereas they almost were able to kill off the Void by themselves, but that hurt them. And then uh, another thing is, we have to go back now to this tier 3 thing where they were going high ground like they are underestimating how much damage sunray is percent space especially with a heart you immediately have to relocate the ck he's just always gonna have to get relocated yeah immediately. that's the one thing you know a, a nice early commitment to the heart and we all know like ck is one of those heroes that benefits heart more than most but then again it also just comes back to really bite him in the ass when you're going against something like the phoenix here so that's where you got to make sure your paramedic uh and your spartan who's done a stellar job this game so far uh, is really gonna have to make sure he is on his a game it looks like he has a ghost scepter to help him out in case of those frantic moments where he's trying to get in for the clutch saves or at least returning from a clutch save um but still the they, they have a, a journey ahead of him here yeah, great. good against the Clinks. I mean, the Clinks could get a defusal, I guess. I don't think it's on his radar right now as a BKB is in order, but um, we'll save him from the heavy hitting damage. Yeah, he'll get Clink he'll get defusal next. Ninety percent sure. And I'm not trying I'm trying to figure out what else he could really go for. Uh, normally, you would go MKB or Daedalus, depending on what you need for more DPS. But you have to kill the wisp in the team fights so, and if he has a ghost scepter somebody needs defusal blade potentially faces void could go for it too so but yeah he definitely needs a bkb first on the clinks which he's going for then oh my goodness I now af lineup is more and more useless now like when they have the bkbs and the two fours there's there's not much that goes through it so yeah. only way for af to really win these team fights now is they're gonna have to, yeah, the Blink Ravage that they have online for Skylark, they're gonna have to surprise them, or they're just gonna have to kite them constantly. It's like and one of those games DVDs. with the Alchemist Factor, like, you know, if you happen to like, you know, you wake up or you happen to get back home and you you, you fire up the Twitch, you see your, your, your team's playing, and there's an Alk in the game, and you can just look at the net worth now. And yeah, normally Alk is a little bit ahead, but when you see that he's this far ahead, then you know it's going very, very nicely. But here we go, fight's gonna be breaking out. A jump on four, they get Madar under the chrono, and now the right click comes out, and they commit even a static storm on top of it, all to get down that CK, and it will pay off. Uh, can Verse Pro get anything else? No fear. Already committed the glimpse, uh, so there's not gonna be a follow-up glimpse play here, but it doesn't matter. They get what they need, it looks like, and, and they'll just have to settle for that. All right, AF. This is this is one of those situations you actually can't save your poor. Oh, they have eyes of Aloha there. He's gonna need that uh, timer. I'll remember it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Thirty-one fifty-four. Throw out some different numbers and maybe. Uh, oh yeah, wasn't three it, one five four classic. Wasn't it classic three one there. five two? Yeah, never mind. I, I don't forget. know secret codes. I'm not, I uh, forgot an now. agent. Still got six minutes though, if they want to kind of meet the quota here. But all in good timing for Virtus Pro. Obviously, very, very wealthy at this point. Biggest, most significant net worth advantage of the game so far, pushing now past that 10k mark. XP is also kind of catching up a bit. And as it goes on, it only gets easier and easier for Virtus Pro. It's without question, the, the ball is in Adfinim's court to kind of turn this one around but there are not many options left for them they're gonna have to maybe find some pickoffs or just pull one hell of a surprise play here on Virtus pro yeah it, the problem with chaos knight is he's one of those heroes that 
Captain needs so many items, but he can't farm it fast enough. And yeah, in this situation, you're just like saying, "Oh, look, I can right-click a creature. I can right-click." Well, that's that's not pushing out lanes fast. That's that's doing nothing. And he needs an AC to counteract all the physical DPS, but he also needs an MKB desperately to counter the the radiance. So, I think what's priority right now is probably getting the MKB so he can actually kill the the alchemist. Uh, and you're gonna have to bank on your survivability coming in. Wisp, your mechanism tied, but it's a very hard, very hard game from AF right now. So they're gonna have to play perfect from here on out if they really want to win this. Let's see if they can do it. For the most part, looks like Team AF are gonna hustle towards the north to at least pressure towards this tier two. Uh, probably figuring that maybe Virtus Pro are gonna hang around this mid lane, then go to the Roche and stay far. Uh, we'll have to see if that's the approach that first four are indeed going to take or not. Uh, for right now, just kind of, you know, with their full BKBs, probably happy to take any sort of fight that would come their way. But as G will kind of stay forward and continue to farm on the AF side of the map, the rest of Virtus Pro looks like they may cross paths here very soon. Madara is still hitting the tower here pretty confidently. There's a jump in from Yoku. They're going to need a relocate save, and there it goes. It's just a minor pullback. Them. They don't get it. Yeah, glimpse too. Don't get it. Nice glimpse play comes out from No Fear, and now Spartan is in serious trouble. He was just planted, waiting for that save. He'll ghost right now, but he is as sure as dead. And it's another strong Virtus Pro fight. This is, you know, Advenem really going to be down the dumps at this point. I mean, the kill score says 20 to 20, but I can tell you, it's not even. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just... What? How much is the gold lead right now? Yeah, 12k. And at 12k is about... I want to say 20 to 25k at this stage in the game. Just because of how well VP's lineup scales into the later stages of the game. And how far ahead they are right now. So it's looking very grim for AF. And they, I mean, like I was talking about, they're just going to kick themselves Radiant's in the foot when they look back on this game, fortified. diving for that tier three Rex. Yeah. Three after it. It's just like, they just relocated out CK at that moment. They, they would have won that team fight, but didn't happen. And then now you're seeing the, ad, uh, the, the effects now of the disruptor. Like he's getting accustomed to playing against this with So what is he doing? He's pre emptively casting the glimpse knowing that the the relocate's coming yep Play's really no reason not there. to because he's gonna die what looks like almost either way so wonderfully staged from from Virtus pro at this point and you know it's one of those frustrating things when you're gonna have to go back and check the replay if you're uh, at the and you know look at what was pretty much the, the definitive tipping point of this game and that's where you have to you know reevaluate how much discipline you're putting into the game and making sure that you don't get too hasty and overextending. I mean, it looks like it's so good. It's it's right there. You could taste oh, the opportunity. G. Top lane, though. They make a jump for G with a relocate. He mances off, but the finger gets him. And with all that burst, they'll lose their alchemist. And for you, an alchemist kill does give over a pretty good penny, if I'm not mistaken. They nearly get 3K of a gold swing based on that. Wisp gets about 1,000 gold for taking him down. That's and here comes f and you know. Oh, Spartan Mid lane, did. though. Yeah, Spartan. Hey. They found him on the way back. Yeah, he is trying to hide. He's dead, though. Get that freaking ball. Got him. Last SWAT will come out from Yoku, but the rest of Advenem push forward to get a tower and are actually pinging out like they want to go for the high ground now. This is, this is really good for them. To the yeah, Wisp has buyback, so he can relocate in. Problem is still, though, that Faceless Void plus Clinks, I feel like, will just destroy Chaos Knight still. Like, they don't even need Alchemist's DPS at this stage of the game to yeah. win team fights. That's, that's the scary part. And that's how far behind AFR right now. Yeah, Alchemist, like, get him out of the game, and this game feels kind of even, just based on the share, the share of net worth between the Clinks and the CK. The, it's almost just as if this Alchemist is like one awesome insurance policy for Virtus Pro at the moment. And, uh, well, confidence to still be able to make it work without him. It looks like Roche is up, and Virtus Pro are going to go ahead and take him down. And obviously, with the power of Clinks and his Desolator, and now he even has a crit to stack on the extra damage, it really takes no effort at all. And with the Acid Spray, he melts like butter. He did.
So, question now is, what are AF going to do to hold high ground? Their high ground is decent, but they're going to have to find a way to wrap around and kill Phoenix. I, I think they're able to kill off the Phoenix before he can really use his Sunray, then there's potential for them to win the team fight. Sunray is just destroying Chaos Knight more than the Clinks, yep. and just that shouldn't happen <laughs> as a as a core or a support. You know, it's but it's abilities. Oh, pull back here is uh, just going to be on a creep. Sorry, I got a little excited about that one. It's top lane though, where G could be spotted out. What is this? Skylark just hanging out behind a tree. Oh, maybe next time jumps in, but it's onto the illusion. And now a relocate all in for this. Oh, it's disaster for Adfinem. They're going to be losing their lion. It looks like they might be able to get the catch for Spartan. They're waiting for the glimpse. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. Get the hell back over here. And they take him down too. Double support takedown will be awarded to Virtus Pro on that one. Man, it was a valiant effort. They tried to lay down a trap to get a hold of the Alchemist, but G will not be caught. Courier, give it a courier. Wow. Damage. Oh, he Happy. gets a nice little last laugh on that one. Oh, I keep forgetting I can't. I have to switch my courier hotkey because they changed it where now you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever for all the heroes. And I used to have two, number two, on my courier. Now I gotta switch to something else. Mm. Well, nonetheless, courier or not, Virtus Pro do not falter, and now they come from the north. And they're knocking on the tier three, and it is made of paper goddamn mache. Oh my god, look at everything fall. Oh my god. They hit so freaking hard. Yeah, this Rax is done for. And they'll try their best. Madara gonna pop out. He gets four. Well, counting himself, I guess. He gets three illusions, but they just turn around and walk away. He can't get the catch on nobody. Radiance top has fallen. And with Madara using his ult like this, this is very crippling. Very crippling. They need to get those ASAP. Uh... uh oh. What? That. Oh, I thought that was. Okay, the other team stack storm. It's just going to be a zoning stack storm, but it doesn't matter, no fear. You are dead, sir. They will even gladly do a, a, a small little time jump right there with that the relocate to get that kill. That was a really bad ravage, too. I now they don't have okay. So now they don't have Ravage or they don't have Chaos Knight. Loot. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what the hell they're gonna do now. They don't even need this. Well, this is okay. Very bad. Looks like they spotted out. Maybe he's gonna be able to get the blink away. Just as Yoku jumps in, Thug gets off his own little rift. That's the never gonna dance around a bit, but. They're not going to be dancing for long. Virtus Pro are coming, and Atfinem don't have much to stop them with no more Ravage to work with. They do have a coil. I don't know if that's going to be enough, though. Still have no ulti on Madara, and uh, Alchemist is just giggling away as he just crushes this tier 3. They still have the Aegis on Aloha Dance. This is going to take one hell of a Hail Mary play for Atfinem to survive this one. Here comes Virtus Pro. They're looking to dive back. Yoku still reserving the Chronosphere. Doesn't even feel like it's necessary. He'll just gladly save it up and... Come on, guys. He can't even finish the racks. Well, Madara's going to force him to come back and try to finish it. They pull him back in. Chrono right on the egg. Time dilation. Beautiful between the two. Can they get the finish? Yes, they can. One and two both go pop. FNG's egg cracks. Yoku is just spilled all over the floor. It's a hot mess right now. We'll fry up the watermelon. And the towel will be thrown in. It's going to be Virtus Pro who will claim game number one of this best of three. Yep. That was really well played coming in for VP, punishing Team AF for being a little bit uh, too greedy at times and just holding on. Like once this game was kind of past that, you know, 30 minute mark, it was just easy sledding for them because they they were just able to farm faster and they were just way more. Uh, ahead in the item department and that's that's just the problem with alchemist man it's just like no matter how many times you kill him early on he's like the old shadow fiend it's 